Presenting on my experiences participating in the Coast Space Rescue First Steps U19 Challenge, as well as explaining the strategies that I have implemented in my code and my learning experiences. I am Cadence Lowe. This is my second year participating in robotics. Last year, I participated in the National Robotics Challenge. This year, I participated in the Rescue Line Challenge, which was unfortunately cancelled, and participated in the IQ Challenge in June. I also participated in the Virtual RCAP Coast Base Rescue Challenge, where I got second in the Rescue First Steps U19 category. For the challenge, I investigated the problem of how to get the highest score in the shortest possible amount of time. The solution to this problem was to implement different strategies to make the robots more efficient. Such strategies that I implemented include square targeting and using a weighted average for steering. As a result, the robot was able to complete the mission more efficiently, hence forming the conclusion that the efficiency of the robot can be increased with effective strategies. This challenge consists of a few parts. One is to pick up two of each different colour object, and the other is going to the deposit zone to deposit the objects. However, there are parts of the challenge that hinder the movement of the robot, such as avoiding walls and avoiding traps. I also picked out RRCCV resets, as this was the method that could get me the most points the most consistently, as each deposit allowed me to get 180 more points. I have implemented different strategies to increase the efficiency of these processes so that my robot will be able to get more points. The algorithms I used include square targeting, proportional steering using three ultrasonic sensors, color tree for differentiating the different colors, in different cases for trap avoidance. To code, I use Sublime Text, which is a simple and easy to use C code compiler. The first strategy I implemented is square targeting. It uses Pythagoras theorem to calculate the shortest distance to a square and uses trigonometry to calculate the turning angle to get to that square. This is done using the tangent inverse function, also known as a ten two. The robot targets the square with objects that it needs to get RRCCB resets. After it collects 6 objects, it targets the nearest deposit zone to deposit objects more quickly. For example, if the robot needs to collect red objects, it will target the 0 to square. This strategy is a key component that allowed my robot to get higher scores as the robot did not move randomly around the map. For steering, 3 ultrasonic sensors were used. The straight line distance between the left and right sensors to the wall is compared to find the turning direction of the robot. If the left ultrasonic sensor is closer to the wall, the robot will turn to the right, and vice versa. The distance from the robot to the wall is calculated as the minimum value of the three ultrasonic sensors. The distance from wall value is combined with the square targeting value using a weighted average to find the total turning rate. This turning rate value is put into the differential steer function to move the robot. To detect the different colors, a color tree was coded. Thresholds of R, G, and B values were derived such that the color could be determined. This was more accurate than using cases as this allows for greater variations in the color values and the robot can correctly identify the color even if the robot is not completely on the color. Using square targeting, the robot knows which squares it is in and what objects are in each square. Using this information, the robot targets the nearest square in which it requires objects or the nearest deposit zone. The robot does not collect objects one color at a time, but whichever color object is closest to it. For example, if the robot goes from the square 0, 2 to 1, 2, it will not turn back to collect red objects unless it already contains two cyan objects. This ensures that the robot does not spend too much time in one square. To avoid traps, the compass value is used. The turning direction is determined by the angle of the robot. If the robot is between 45 degrees and 180 degrees, the robot turns right. If not, it turns left. This is especially useful for the bottom trap, as turning right allows the robot to find more black objects or go into the deposit zone. 
One problem that I faced was that the robot was not fully in the deposit zone, hence causing it to not deposit the objects properly. To solve this problem, I made sure that both color sensors detected the exact orange value before depositing, and slowed down in the squares with the deposit zone when the robot was fully loaded, so that the robot would be fully in the deposit zone. Another problem I faced was that there was a lack of red objects in the 02 square, so called in blue. Even though it was the square of the most red objects, there would be few red objects left after some deposits. Hence, I solved this problem by making the robot go to 02 and 22 to collect red objects after three deposits have been made. It was also not easy for my robot to find black objects. Though black objects were found in the 01 and 11 squares, they were not fully in these squares. Hence, it was more difficult to find black objects. I solved this problem by making the robot target the 11 square instead of the 01 square when it was in the 00 square, which allowed the robot to turn in the direction of the black objects. In this video, the robot turns towards the 11 square to collect black objects instead of the 01 square, which allows it to find black objects more quickly. Here is a video of my robot running. After picking up red and black objects, it goes to pick up sign objects. It then targets the nearest deposit zone, the 12 square. This process repeats itself after the robot deposits objects. When the robot is in the 00 square, it targets the 11 square, allowing it to pick up objects more quickly. After three deposits, the robot collects red objects in the 00 and 22 squares. In conclusion, I think that these strategies are vital for being able to find objects more quickly and the deposit zone more quickly and allowed me to get a much higher score compared to when I was using the graphical user interface or GOI to code for the IQ challenge. For the IQ challenge, I was barely able to get 1,000 points, but I was able to get more than 2,000 points after I implemented various strategies. In the future, both strategies could be used to increase the efficiency of the robot, such as the mapping of different colors to make the color detection more accurate. I realized that the Cospace robot was much more reliable and consistent compared to the robots that I've worked with before, reminding me that simulations are different from real life, and there are always ways to make my code more efficient, and there is always room for improvement, and I should always find ways to improve my code. Also, even though I signed up for this competition individually, I received help from many people such as my teachers, my friends, and my coach. Without their help, I would not have been able to understand how to implement the different functions. Thank you.